Hey everyone, Senrai Kai here. Today I'm going to be watching the 12th and final episode of Tokidoki Bosoto Russia Go De Dedaru Tonari no Alia san. Since it's the last episode, I thought I'd just try to say the, the, the full title. Again, it, it's still a struggle. But uh, but yeah, last episode, we had some good stuff. We had the Ayano made, you know, you know uh, service. We had Alia coming over for like a sick visit. We had Yuki just destroying Alia. Like having her pretty much fall into her hands completely, like kind of shaking her confidence a little bit, but nothing we can't can't bounce back from. So, but this is the final episode. It feels like we have a lot, a decent amount to wrap up in in one episode. But uh, I, I guess we'll see how it decides to finish things off. So, let's just jump on in and find out. Three, two, one, play. Yeah, I think we actually do see I don't know when that made outfit like very briefly in the opening. You know, he has a guitar or something similar on his back. Do we ever see him play that thing? You know, when I really pay attention to this opening, there are some parts that do make a little bit more sense with now that I have more context with characters and, and, and events and stuff. You know, not, not, not the dancing stuff, but, you know. Some of the other stuff. <sighs> but I do know the, the winter storm snow is supposed to represent a sad life and... <laughs> And Alia being that little flower that blossoms up and makes it better. At least that's my interpretation of the symbolism. Episode 12, Chin Up and Face Forward. Maya o mi muita. Oh yeah, because students definitely love this, this kind of student council stuff. <laughs> Have you tried showing some cleavage? <laughs> I can't do anything about that, at least not quickly. Imagine everyone in the run door. Say a gag. Yuki. I know that voice. <laughs> that little laugh. <laughs> Just kiss you two. Arama. You know you want to bend her over that table. Disillusion would be a better translation there. Definitely true for Yuki. I mean, that is a good thing to think about, for sure. Have something that you want to have a good answer to. When somebody asks. Steki Nahito, she's flirting with you. 
<laughs> I can watch you two go at it all day. <laughs> and Ollie can never be involved in this kind of conversation. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> and somebody had to break this tension. <laughs> What I got from that is that Masashka needs to spank Yuki. That was my takeaway from there. I guess you could abbreviate it like that. <laughs> if I didn't already know it as junk, and I would not have known what he even meant, though. Masha, you are still very cute. I'm glad you're being you. Thank you, Duayo. Hey! I'm actually quite like the animation on that. You get no game, no life flashbacks. And she thinks quickly. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> I did it, Aliya Chan. Praise me. Yeah, Yuki, I mean, what what do you want? <laughs> and she just stand there being all cute as usual. You know, this kind of internal model like, makes me feel like she's the protagonist of the show. <laughs> like she's the light Yagami. <laughs> she might be overthinking and, and playing herself here. I feel like that's probably what he wanted, honestly. <laughs> Still calls her Kujimo, Kujo Himoto. <laughs> If that was Alia, I would definitely not allow, not, not be okay with that. Self-discipline. That's for losers. Only two months. <laughs> it's all right. You can't tell, don't tell me what to do. Masha can tell me what to do. <laughs> hey, Yuki Sama. That's her game face.
。頑張れ。Thank you, guys. I will never not hate the translation for this show. Okay, Valley Wind student opinion. <laughs> oh, okay. Suggestion box. I like how it's nice and sturdy. <laughs> I'm doing my job. I got the light. <laughs> like, why did I agree to this? It's so hot up here. She's got us there. Hey, yeah, they got their own problems to deal with. No time to care about yours. Please fulfill my wishes, Yuki Sama. <laughs> or tiny mini skirts. Although, honestly, they're, I'm, I'm pretty satisfied with their length on this show. <laughs> She's a politician, yes. <laughs> that's a lot, that's a big, that's a lot to follow up, Alia. You're gonna be okay. What? Oh. Okay. Wasn't quite expecting that. <laughs> like I thought, like I thought uh, Alia was going up next. <laughs> I'm her slave. She is, she's amazing. <laughs> Studying Chinese, damn. She really should study Russian. <laughs> and of course, Yuki wrote that speech entirely. Now, now Alia yeah, gets her turn. You got this, girl. Yuki might have a lot going for her, but you've got that Russian beauty. You got this. Oh, she's breaking out the Russian. She's not messing around. Kujo Arisa. You tell him, girl. Be about us this did the digit. It's like, was I supposed to bring my translator? I... Like, it's not the words that matter, it's the feeling behind them. <laughs> this is definitely an interesting strategy, a way to get their attention. <laughs> For like 30 seconds. <laughs> I mean, I guess. <laughs> kind of. I mean, it, it got their attention. <laughs> yeah, that definitely, like, yeah. Sna like, snapped them back to, uh, like, a default state.
Masashka just so good. <laughs> But I'm a sexy Russian girl, so give me the job. What is that? I am curious. I'm a hard worker. Oh, nice shot. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we'll give her a little bit of an applause, but like... Realistically, I can't imagine that swaying too many people. I mean, basically, what does she say? Like, you know, I know I'm not as qualified as Yuki, but I'll work hard. Yeah, I'll, I'll do my best, guys. Please, please support me. So, I mean, Massage is going to really have to probably pull the weight here like usual. Wow. Wow. You should have spoke Russian, man. That is a big question. <laughs> Cheating on his sister, how horrible. Damn. How rude. <laughs> That's an happy uh, in a manner in a manner of speaking. Is a girl that I want to, to marry. It was okay. 6.5 out of 10. But that's what he's kind of banking on, you know. No, not really. And yeah, what else you got? <laughs> it's like first time I've heard of this. Yeah, that's why I was going to do this. Drink so much extra water. <laughs> Uh. 
Smile and wave, smile and wave. <laughs> this was a good play, though. Now we're even. <laughs> I didn't expect you to. But that was definitely the best thing I could have done to give her a little bit of credibility. So it was, it was a really good play. Your speech was great. Don't don't worry, I know. You did great. Yeah, it's you know war battle. Thirty third. <laughs> Night. Oh, I'm sure she'll come up with something. <laughs> you can't believe what I say in Russian. <laughs> and yet this girl is supposed to be supposed to be the one to lead us when she's so ill prepared. <laughs> That's uh, the just interesting strategy. We'll see how it pays off. <laughs> oh, the awkwardness. <laughs> well, when you say it like that, it's it's too powerful. <laughs> well, I went smoothly. Yes. So we should also be together all the time. That's, that's probably a pretty good idea. <laughs> it wasn't the net, but that was a Yemiso title. <laughs> oh, oh, my heart. Oh, my, oh, God. Oh, that was a, uh, oh, Alia. Oh, yeah. oh, I wasn't ready for that. <laughs> That was the most straightforward she's expressed her feelings in, in not in not Russian. She oh glasses girl looks so excited back there. I don't think I've ever seen her look like that in the show before. <laughs> Even though she's at the back of the line. 
I do really like this CD. I can just feel like the happy emotions that is kind of flowing flowing out of it. The Sakura petals, the the really nice looking character sprites. And that's that. <laughs> okay. That was the twelfth and final episode of yeah Roshi Dead. Okay, this was our final episode, and uh, pretty much the climax of the season was essentially one final speech, like competing with each other between our two big candidates. Oh yeah, and Yuki, right? So that was a thing. A lot of good stuff here. Like we had a uh, Yuki and Masashka, like ba you know, battle of words, like Game of Thrones type stuff. You know, where you're just like. Like, there's a lot of, like, uh, implied meaning, thinly veiled threat kind of, like, lines back and forth with each other. I don't know if there's a proper term for that. But, you know, hopefully you get what I'm trying to say. There was that between Masashka and Yuki. The kind of dialogue that an honest, straightforward girl, girl like Alia could never do, that sort of thing, right? But Masashka and Yuki, they, 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 they can do that. And they did. So seeing them, like, 1v1 each other. It was actually really cool to get to see that. You even got a big monologue from Yuki trying to figure out the situation, trying to understand what's, what Masashka's thinking, what his strategy is, and all that. But it has some cute Masha stuff, too. Like, we didn't get a lot of Masha, but the whole, like, Masha volunteering for the thing and everything, we had a lot of just really cute, well-delivered lines from Masha in the part that she was relevant to. So I, I really enjoyed that. But... So that was kind of like our first, fourth, third issue of the episode. But after that, we had our speeches. Yuki gave her speech and Alia gave hers. And uh, yeah, Yuki's speech, I thought it was really good. She definitely le le leveraged her abilities, her, 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 her uh, you know, what she has going for her, right? Which is her experience and everything like that. And she, she's got that politician's way of speaking down, which is really able to get everyone sucked into it and everything like that. Maybe people, maybe people feel like they would, they would be making the right decision to vote for her. So she nailed that pretty pretty well. Even got Ayano to go up there afterwards and singing Yuki's praises. I think she did a pretty good job of that uh, as well. And, and yeah, Yuka, Alia, not, things were not set up well for Alia. So I do think the strategy of speaking Russian for a little bit to kind of like cleanse the palate was, uh, was, was, was good. You know, that, I, I definitely agree with that. The actual speech itself was okay. Like, like I know she's trying to leverage her own appeal because, I, I'm, you know, in this the rest of this reaction, I'm, I'm going to try not to be too mean to Alia. But I, remember, I do like her. I'm just going to try to express my, my my perspective on this. But Alia, she doesn't have any real experience compared to, to, to Yuki. She doesn't have the, the uh, you know, that politician mindset to, like, you know, re say what people want to hear to, to, to get their vote, right? So there's, so Ali really does not have much going for her as far as a presidential candidate. It's the only real positive that she has is that she is honest and straightforward. And to a certain degree, people that are used to dealing with shady politicians will appreciate that, right? So there is some some value to that. But her speech is basically talking about, like, working hard and all that and, like... Not really much to latch on to in, in her speech, really. Like, I'm not going to call it a bad speech. It was as good as could really be, because like I said, she doesn't really have much to really put out there as, as baits, really. So it really was up to Masashka to try to, to do his best to, to, to follow that, right? And, like, the main point of her speech was to kind of get her personality out there so they know what kind of person they are voting for. And then Masashka kind of, kind of you know, volleys it. What's the best word for it? Like, like, Alia, like, bounces the ball up, and Masashka's job is to kind of, like, smack it over the, the volleyball net. So, it's kind of just trying to utilize her honest and straightforward personality, try to, like, really make that appeal of why that's, of why that's a good thing, why you would want someone like that to, to the audience. That was kind of his role. 
And, you know, that's pretty much what he did. Like, try to talk about her charisma and, like... Because one thing he had to bring up was why he's supporting her instead of Yuki. Like, because that's a big deal. Going from supporting someone in the past and now supporting their exact rival. It's like, well, what happened? Was there a big fight? Like, do they hate each other now? What, what did we miss? But he basically pretty much just said, Alia char charmed me away from Yuki, you know? Like, there's not really a good way to put that, honestly. <laughs> like, he, he just, he, he tries, but at the end of the day, it's hard to see that as anything, but Alia seducing him away from Yuki, like, that's going to be the narrative, that's going to be how people see it, unless you try really hard to try to dispel that. And he did his best, but, like, that's still kind of what he made it, seem, made it sound like, you know? <laughs> but, like, he tried to make it sound, sound as good as he could, but at the end of the day... That's that's what happened. Like he was with Yuki, and he's got this Alia girl. It's like you know what? I, 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 you know, I'd rather go to her, right? So, and when she is as incredibly beautiful as Alia is, you're going to assume that that is a reason, right? That's what charmed him away. Not anything that would be applicable to being a good student council president. Just because everybody appreciates a, a a kind, straightforward, honest, sexy girl, sexy Russian girl. Like nobody can really dislike that. But would you want someone like that? representing you in like a political scenario right not not necessarily so overall i like i feel like he had a big uphill battle he was he was doing here and i think he did the best he really could with the situation he was in but overall i would only give it maybe an 8 out of 10 but because i was not really convinced to uh that alia would be the best president right i like alia as a person i'm always gonna like alia as a person but his speech did not sway me to thinking she would make a better president than Yuki, right? That was, that's kind of, I would say, my perspective. He, he did bring the other two girls on there, which I think was his best move, because this was a girl that was so against Alia that she 1v1'd her in front of everyone, but she lost, right, ran away, and now, a little bit later, she is in her camp, right? Like, if you're trying to persuade people to... to to, to think that there's some legitimacy behind Alia, that there is something there that would make her a good president. That was definitely his best move to that end, right? I think that's what got him overall about even with Yuki as far as results go. But I would still kind of give it to Yuki as far as overall effect because Alia, it was Alia's entire faction uh, appeal. Uh, platform, whatever you want to call it. It was much more emotion-based, you know? Like, oh yeah, she's just a great girl, don't you want to vote for her? You know? Whereas Yuki was much more cold, calculated, like, I've got the experience, I'm, I, this is the kind of job I can do, you're in good hands with me, like, I know what I'm doing, I, I care about your, I care about your, your, your problems, like, it will be great. Which, you know, compared to Yuki, he's like, I'm, I'm a good girl. I'll work really hard to, to be worthy of the position. That's nice and all, but I feel like that would fade more over time uh, compared to Yuki's approach. So, I would, overall, I would still say Yuki's very much in the, in, the, in the ahead as far as student body opinion goes. Is how I would, uh, is my overall takeaway. And I still think Yuki would probably make the better president. I'm willing to keep an eye on Alia, see how she continues to develop, but currently she is still very much heavily relying on Masashka. And I've, like, I watched another reaction series, a reactor react to the show, and he has commented before on just, like, how Masashka has to keep, like, saving Alia, and how she just kind of looks dumb in comparison to him and all that. And that's the, the definitely true. So if we can get to a point where I don't feel like Masashka has to carry Alia, like, uh, Almost like a big brother trying to help his little sister do something, you know. If we get to the point where Alia feels like she doesn't need Masashka, Masashka just like a little bit of an extra bonus to help out here and there. But Masashka can act, but uh, but Alia can actually come across as competent and skillful and all that, like no longer needing him to needing him to bail her out, like in the sports drama, right? Like if we get to the point where she could just handle that without him coming in, then they, at that at that point, I would definitely lean more towards voting for Alia, but she's got to get there. Like, saying that you're going to work hard and try to be worthy of the position is nice and all, but until we actually get to that point, I'm not going to be too swayed into thinking she's the prisoner for us. I think that's my overall uh, perspective. Hopefully I did an okay job of explaining my, my position there. But... I, I talked way too much. I'm, I'm tired now. I just, just kind of want to end it off. We just had a nice cute, cute scene at the end there where Masashka's like, hey... 
think we can hang out over summer break, you know, just for business reasons, right? I mean, they're doing it, so I, we, we should do it too, right? And then she just says, you know, happily, yorokonde, whatever. But she says it in, in Japanese. I almost said English, but that's not true. She, she does not speak English. She said it in Japanese. It's like looking at him straight straightforward, not trying to hide it or downplay it or anything. She just said she would happily, because it wasn't even a yes. It was like, yorokonde, like, like I would love to, basically. Like, it doesn't get much more straightforward under feelings than that. So the fact that she said that in such a way really shows character progression in that sense. But but yeah, overall, I'd say, I, would, I would say this is a pretty good uh, stopping point for the series. Obviously, there's more more to the story. <laughs> like, we still got to have the actual election and everything like that. And I'm, and I'm sure Alia will win in the end. It's just in a meta-narrative sense, that would uh, it, uh, they're going to they're gonna make Alia win, right? <laughs> Like, I just hope she, by the time that happens, she I I can agree with her deserving it. Is all I can really say. But uh, I, I mean, probably. But but yeah, good episode. I thought it was a pretty good finale overall, and I enjoyed the show a lot overall. And it, like, we had a lot of beautiful, likable girls in this show. You know, Alia, sexy Russian girl. You know, honest, cute, speaks Russian sometimes to hide her embarrassment. There's a lot to like about her. And then Yuki, she's Emoto Otaku. She's got all that great stuff going on for her. Got has a great relationship with Masashka. They're able to hang out and talk about Otaku stuff together all secretly. She she messes with Alia because nobody knows that they're siblings and all that. All that was great to see. Alia, Alia uh, Yuki is obviously a little bit two faced because she has the Ojo Sama persona she puts on for other people, right? And you could call that a character flaw in some sense, but like, you know, I was never too bothered by it, right? But it just makes her very different than Alia in a sense. But after knowing her per true personality, the, the Ojo Sama stuff in public feel, feels very weird. Feels very weird. I still give myself a little bit of credit for the fact that I was able to pick up on how fake it was even before the reveal. But And then we have, those are our two main girls and they're both great. We have Ayana, who I like a lot as well. We have a blonde girl, Nonoa, I don't, I don't, I don't remember her name. But the blonde girl, I, I kind of like her too. But, uh... But yeah, you know, I, I, I do, I do look forward to the to the point where people actually finally realize that that's Masashka's sister, because <laughs> just I can just imagine um, Alia's reaction to that being quite funny. But because you know it'll happen eventually, obviously not in the first season of the anime, but at some point we're, we're gonna figure out the truth. But I mean, because right now <laughs> all she knows is like Yuki had a brother, probably dead. I mean, that was her interpretation, but he, he's not dead. <laughs> but but I, I do what I would have liked more fan service in the show. I do feel like that was a bit of a bait and switch. I mean, we had a little bit of it. I mean, early on we had the feet stuff, we had the Pansu stuff, we had like a changing scene, we had the hypnotism was I mean the hypnotism that was some real good stuff right there. But I feel like we could have like I would have liked I would have liked them to have doubled it. The amount of like fan service scenes we got, if they had just doubled it, I would have been pretty happy overall. Because if you're going to put something like that in episode one, you kind of set a precedent, an expectation of a certain amount of it going forward, right? Because you, because if you have like a beach episode in episode seven or whatever, but some fan service, that, that that's great. You you don't really expect anything after that. But but if you have stuff like this in episode one, you're going to expect it to be like a episode, like every episode or at least every episode kind of thing. And I feel like they teased us and didn't deliver as much as they kind of should have. That's probably one of my bigger complaints of the of the show because when they did do it, it was really good. Like they they nailed it when they did do it. So it definitely missed opportunity to not have it because they have app because the girls in the show, absolutely gorgeous, ten out of ten. Like like everyone, <laughs> Masha. I didn't even mention Masha because Masha's great as well. Uh, so to uh, to uh, definitely underutilized. <laughs> but man, I will definitely forever appreciate the hip hip hypnosis episode. Don't even. No, no, don't even doubt me on that one. That was that was some good stuff right there, but but uh, yeah, really good show overall, I would say. So, thank you for watching, and hope to see you in the next video. Until then, bye bye.